they're using your money to compete against you in the open market on houses. House prices have increased in price, but they haven't increased in value. House values haven't gone up very much at all. It's only the prices in conjunction with the amount of printing. This is the world we find ourselves in. I really hope and pray that one day we will not be in this monetary system. The other thing we have to bear in mind is not just the post-pandemic world that we find ourselves in, but the unemployment aspect as well, which has been disproportionately affecting young people over older people. And here's why. Number one, young people have been losing their jobs in the last year and a half much faster than people that are a lot older. This is gonna be much harder for them to get on the housing market because not only have they been priced out with these exceptionally high price rises, now they've been losing their jobs much more rapidly than people that are older than them or their peers. Because it doesn't take a, a rocket scientist to, to figure out that if you are unemployed, you don't qualify for a mortgage. But aha, unless you factor in these large financial institutions because ladies and gentlemen, they will come riding in on their white horse and they will buy up all the houses to help you out and then they will increase the rents and rent them back to you, making sure that you definitely can't afford to get on the housing ladder in the future. Point number two then is excessive rising debt levels among younger people. And because younger people are more likely to be renters than homeowners, again, they're disproportionately affected because these mortgage forbearance plans haven't benefited most people like that at all. And in fact, what the government's announced was a rent moratorium so that renters couldn't be evicted. However, those renters still need to pay the rent at the end of the term. Point number three then is buying versus renting. And we'll just use some basic numbers here because it's pretty obvious why so many people over the last year and a half have wanted to buy their own property. In the UK, the average mortgage payment is currently £723, whilst the average rental payment is more than £1,000 per month. In the United States, the average mortgage payment is $1,275 per month, against an average rent payment of $1,219 per month. So it isn't a like-for-like -like example, and that's why when you're not in this sort of crazy bubble territory, it's always much better to actually buy a property than to rent. So let's get on to the question of why have these prices gone up so dramatically and when may they become more affordable again? So point number one then is low interest rates. You've heard me talk about this before. We have historically low interest rates right now across most major nations. When you have low interest rates, this makes it more affordable because people don't buy a house with cash. They buy it on the monthly payment. So the lower the interest rate, the more house that people can get for their money. This is a false economy because interest rates have to eventually go up. And then those people could be really, really stuck if they have maxed themselves out on the monthly payment, especially if it's with two incomes in the household and one person maybe takes off some time, I don't know, maternity, paternity, these sort of things can have a negative impact. However, if those people have got a long-term 20, 30 year fixed rate, it won't matter too much and I'm sure most people will be responsible and they will account for this in their budgeting. Point number two then is there just isn't enough houses on the market or what we call low inventory levels. This is very simply a lesson in supply and demand. It's very simple, we learn this in basic economics 101. And that is that if you have a lot of people that want to buy something, but there isn't much of that in supply, the price therefore goes up. If you have it on the other way around, so there aren't many people that want to buy, the prices therefore must come down to meet the market equilibrium. So right now with us not having enough houses on the market, this pushes up the price. However, I do believe inventory will start to turn around and as more houses come onto the market, it should help to normalize house prices. Next has been then the mortgage and rent moratoriums. Whilst this has been in place, it has distorted the market from what would normally happen. 
If a renter didn't pay their rent for months on end, the landlord would evict them, they'd find another tenant. If a person couldn't pay their mortgage, the mortgage lender might do something with them to help them out. But in most places, uh, people would just hand the keys back to the mortgage lender and it would be taken over by the mortgage lender. But this hasn't happened. So you've got now this buildup uh, going right into 2021. It's probably going to continue into 2022, even 2023 for some houses. But I don't see this turned around anytime soon because sometimes this can take a long, long time to process through the courts to actually uh, do evictions or when it's uh, mortgages where people have defaulted on their mortgages. It takes a long time. And then the other wild card that we have right now that we've never had to contend with before is these large financial institutions like BlackRock in the US or Lloyds Bank in the UK who have, are just buying up huge numbers of houses. Lloyds in the UK is talking about 10,000 houses that they want to buy just in the next couple of years. I mean, this is outrageous. It's morally wrong as well because where does Lloyds and these other banks get the money from? Where do you think? It's from you. You deposit your money into that bank as a depositor. They are then using your money. They're paying you almost nothing in interest. They're using your money to compete against you in the open market on houses. Morally wrong. The government should ban it, but they don't. They just allow it because there are too many special interests within this sector, shall we say, and the government just turns a blind eye to it. So I'm sorry to give you the bad news here, but whilst we continue on this current fiat monetary system where central banks can just print money out of thin air or currency more, more precisely, they have no repercussions. They are just a very small board of people that make these decisions. And then the commercial banks are competing with you using your own money to buy houses and outbid you. There's just no way that this crisis is going to end anytime soon, uh, except for one thing that, and that could be a housing market crash where we could see a major correction. But at the same time, if you look at the number of dollars or pounds or whatever currency that's been created in the last year and a half, and you look at the price rises in comparison with your country to that central bank, actually houses have simply gone up in most countries in direct correlation to the number of new dollars, pounds, euros, whatever that has been created. So although house prices have exploded up in price, they've only kept pace with the amount of currency printing. So I would say that house prices have increased in price, but they haven't increased in value. So many people talk about the value of my house has gone up X amount. I've become really rich from my house. Not really. When you compare it to real inflation, not what you're told by the government and the, the news media, but when you look at real inflation, you go to the grocery store, you look at the, the, you know, how much it is to fill up your gas tank, you start looking at all these things, you look at the amount of quantitative easing the central banks have done, and you realize that actually house values haven't gone up very much at all. It's only the prices in conjunction with the amount of printing. So I'm sorry to be the bearer of bad news on that point, but this is the world we find ourselves in. I really hope and pray that one day we will not be in this monetary system we're in now. We'll have a more free, open and fair system where the rich are not getting richer by trillions of dollars. Yes, that's actually happened in the last 18 months and the poor are getting poorer. 